Today, we are making a marshmallow brownie to end all marshmallow brownies. It is basically crazy. Do you see this? I can't see you because it's so giant. It's a really nice, indulgent chocolate brownie topped with a mountain of homemade marshmallow fluff and then more chocolate. I think this is so pretty too. Look at that swirl. I mean, it's Baroque. Basically amazing. So easy to do too. Like if you look, watch my cake decorating videos and you're like, oh my gosh, that guy is out of his mind. I like looking, but I couldn't do it. Make this. It looks very impressive, but all it takes is like a skewer, a toothpick, a little knife to do the swirling and magic happens because the ingredients are so amazing. Let's get started. I'm adding four eggs into a medium bowl. Just crack them right in. No shells though. That's not the crunch we want. Okay, nice pretty yolks too. Now two cups of granulated sugar. Give it a whisk. And yes, you could totally decrease the sugar if you want. That's up to you. I'm gonna get some exercise and whip this up by hand. You could use a standing mixer if you want, or little hand beaters if you want too. Okay, that's nice. We're gonna set this aside, and now it's time for the dry ingredients. One cup or 120 grams of all-purpose flour, about a quarter cup of a nice cocoa powder. This is a Valrona, so good. One teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt. Let's give it a sift. That cocoa is really lumpy, so sifting is nice. It kind of breaks things up. It'll mix together more easily. Your fingers will be nice and dark afterwards too. We're almost done. So what we're gonna do is add in our sugar egg mixture. Love that color. Just mix it up. You can see that cocoa color coming through already. Ooh, Lord. Okay. That's looking good. Now we're gonna to toss in two cups of dark chocolate chips. You can use semi-sweet, bittersweet, a combo, whatever you'd like. Mix it up. And the last step is one cup of melted butter in there. This is a very, very decadent treat, so I'm sorry everybody, I understand. But you know, have a smaller piece. It'll be delicious, if you're concerned. Let's just move it all around. That butter is so delicious. I've made this recipe a few times and sometimes just dump the butter in at the beginning. It really doesn't make a big difference. Okay, look at this. Okay, you can see this batter has basically come together. Nice giant chocolate chips. Yes, you could also add in like a cup or even two cups of chopped walnuts or pecans. We're gonna transfer this into our nine by 13 baking dish now. I'm gonna line it with parchment paper too, so it'll come out really easily. That is a huge, huge bonus. You don't want a brownie stuck in the pan. If it's happened to you, you know it's a sad thing. Okay, let's get that parchment paper out. Just press it in there. You can fold it. You can even put a little bit of batter on the sides to let it stick while it's wet. Or you just trust and believe it'll work with nothing else in there. Okay. And yeah, the sides are naked, but that's totally fine because you'll be using this as handles once it's set. And if you want to get the brownie out before it's set, just put a cooling rack on top and do a flip. All right, pour it out. Get all those chocolate chips. Get all that batter out. This is ready to go into the oven at 350 Fahrenheit, 177 Celsius for half an hour-ish. You can use a toothpick to check that the center is set, although there's gonna be a lot of like molten, puddly chocolate in here, so try and find a place with no chocolate chips, if you can, for that toothpick test. Right, into the oven. I need a mountain of fluff for this brownie, so eight egg whites. If you don't wanna make like that much fluff, you can make half of this with four egg whites. Just take the recipe and cut it in half, really easy. But for me, this brownie is all about like being very dramatic, so eight egg whites it is. I think that using your hands is the best way to separate egg whites and egg yolks. Those yolks will break in half a second. So your soft, clean hands are the best way to make sure no yolk goes into that egg white. Where were these eggs when I was poaching the other day? The fresher an egg is, the more gelatinous the egg white is. So 
That's great for poaching. Not great for macaron. Look at this, I've never seen eggs that are so fresh. All right, last egg. Very proud of myself for not breaking any yolks. You will make a delicious custard or lemon curd. I'm gonna add in a few dashes of cream of tartar, about a quarter teaspoon or so. That'll help stabilize the egg whites. Get this nice and frothy before you add the sugar in. Hold off on the eggs for a second. We need two cups of sugar into a saucepan, half a cup of water, and one quarter cup of light corn syrup. This is what makes that marshmallowy magic happen. Give this just a little bit of a stir to mix up the water, the corn syrup, and the sugar. And now we're gonna put this over like medium high, high heat, this is gonna to get to 240 degrees Fahrenheit or the softball stage. So before I do that, eggs back on. This guy goes on too. Once this is getting frothy, start drizzling in your sugar slowly. Okay, so hopefully these will get to the soft peak stage right when this is at 240, but you might have to alter your temperature and speed. Keep an eye on both. My sugar just reached 240. Now we're gonna drizzle it in slowly while the mixer is running. Don't burn yourself. Be careful. That is a very, 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 very full mixer. I think it'll be okay though. Let this run until it reaches room temperature. It'll be maybe 10 minutes or so. You can pack it with ice, frozen peas if you want. That'll speed things up. You can also add in some vanilla once it cools down a bit. My brownie is out of the oven and cooled so I can handle it. You should let this set completely, to be honest, before you try and take it out. Once it's cooled, you can actually just lift it up by the parchment paper set it aside, and then put all that fluff on top, do the chocolate drizzle, and it'll be so much easier to cut later on. My tip to you. I melted almost a cup of chocolate with a few tablespoons of cream. You get a nice kind of very thick ganache, which is gonna be perfect. You could, however, just melt the chocolate. It'll cool back down and have a little bit of a snap. Let's transfer this into a piping bag, and right before use, in a few moments, we're gonna snip the tip off. But first, the fluff. This is my whisk attachment. You can see it was completely submerged. Wow, that is a lot of fluff. But I think this wants to have like a mountain of marshmallow on top. That's my theory. All right, let's dump it out. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, now carefully <laughs> just move it around a bit. Does that look crazy or does it look crazy good? Once you have all of your fluff down, just give it like a nice smooth, move it towards the edges, and then it's gonna be time to add the chocolate in. Now we're gonna snip the tip off of our bag and then start piping it over here. So just big gloms. This doesn't look great now, but some magic's gonna happen. All right, now I'm gonna take a skewer, my favorite kitchen all-purpose tool, and just start moving the chocolate around to create some swirls. Well, look at that, see, magic. You can also bring up some marshmallow from underneath if you wanna get some more, some more of that white stuff. Hmm, well, 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 that looks pretty nice if I don't say so myself. It's like, whoa, that, my friends, is what we call a brownie. This is totally ready to serve right off the bat. It's gonna be delicious, especially if the brownie is still just reserving a little bit of the heat on the bottom, it'll be nice and gooey. Mmm, my mouth is watering. A little tip for you, if you wanna cut this neatly, butter or oil your knife first, that fat will cut right through the meringue and make everything a lot easier and less gooey, sticky, messy. Okay, next I'll be eating this. 
Well, I hope you enjoy that. Didn't you think when I first started piping the chocolate that you were like, oh, whoa, 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 totally ruined? But then I put that skewer in and magic happened. So crazy. Even I was like, wait, am I doing this right? Like I've made this recipe before, but maybe I did it wrong this time. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna take a bite now. You'll bear with me while I chew, because it's a lot. <laughs> if you're like, whoa, John, that is way too much marshmallow fluff. Go ahead, have that too, and you'll just have like a little thin layer, which might be enough for you. I don't know, I might be sad about it, but that might make you happy. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Remember, the full recipe with the step-by-step -step is always up on preppykitchen.com. And if you like my videos, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe.